What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Early Edge NFL Pick Show brought to you by BetMGM, the sports book born in Las Vegas. Will Brinson here, along with Mike McClure and RJ White to give you picks for every single game on the week seven slate. Man, I mean, week six, a little less uh, maybe exciting than people hope for. And then Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper get traded. A lot to break down for week seven. And we'll start with Thursday Night Football, where the Broncos head to New Orleans as three-point favorites. Sean Payton's first game against his old team, where he coached for years. He's seeking to become the just the seventh NFL coach in history to defeat all 32 NFL franchises with a win. The Broncos' defense has been great fourth in scoring defense and total defense after being terrible last year, blitzing at the highest rate in the league, second most sacks and the saints have collapsed after a great start. There's third team in NFL history to win their first two games by 20 plus points and lose the next four games. RJ, the injury report here is staggering for the saints. I mean, Derek Carr is out. Rashid Shahid is out. Chris Olave is out. They were already missing offensive linemen for the Broncos. No Patrick Sertan. But there is one guy who remains on this uh, on this active roster for the offensive purposes for New Orleans. It is Alvin Kamara's season. I'm taking his over four and a half receptions at minus 135. He has seven career games at 10 plus receptions. So we have the potential to cash this early, typically with these running back receptions. If you're taking over four and a half, you're hoping to get to like six or seven. And that's a guy's ceiling. Kamara's ceiling is 15. You know, um, He's had five plus receptions, eight plus targets in three straight games. I think there's the potential for him to be used at receiver. You talk about those injuries. He's a shorthanded at receiver, especially on the active roster. Um, you know, Throw some him in some snaps out there and put another guy at running back. Your depth of running back is a lot better right now. Um, I'm surprised when I look at the picks that you're not on Denver. This is complete narrativeville. You know, this is a complete Will Brinson narrative special to take Denver here. Um, I would lean to the same. It's at plus three. I know they're missing guys, but Rattler looked solid in the first half last week. He has rapport with Bud Means. There's enough to get there at tight end. I think that they're they're going to be okay offensively. And the biggest key is I wouldn't want to lay three points with Bo Nix on the road. So if you get to full field goal, I'd be looking the Saints. But I think the better play here is smash that Alvin Kamara over four and a half receptions. Yeah, I, I wanted to go uh, Broncos as a best bet, but I can't possibly laid three points with Bo Nix on the road. It's just, it's just asking too much. I mean, it's, it's like you say it out loud and it is a perfect spot. Like I don't think Sean Payton is going to come in here and lose the game. I mean, I think he's, I think he's going to find a way to win. He is one of the most, and I say this in the, as flatteringly as I possibly can, one of the most spiteful and petty coaches that we've ever seen in the NFL. And I I really genuinely mean that in a nice way. I love Sean Payton. I love how spiteful he is. Uh, I think he's a great coach. I don't think offensively, even against the Saints defense has been bad. They're going to want to open things up. I I think I want to show off Bo Nix a little bit, but you got to be careful. Maybe some runs, some design runs for Bo Nix. I am going to go with the Saints team total under at 17 and a half. Rattler did look kind of competent, but this Denver defense is good. Missing Patrick Sertan is huge, but I mean, like, you, you know, it, it, Patrick Sertan would wipe out Chris Olave. I, I think that they can figure out how to take care of Bub Means at wide receiver. So I'm going to go with the Saints team total under here. Uh, Mike, you have a lean in the opposite direction. Yeah, going head to head a little, but there is a path where we both can still cash this. I, I went over the number this morning at 36 and a half, shared it on the Sportsline website and on the early edge. Uh, still like it at 37, would shy away at 37 and a half, but at 36 and a half where we got it this morning, just the idea of winning a bet in a 20 to 17 game in the NFL is very appealing. You know, when you see a number that low, it's typically going to be outdoors with some sort of elements involved, right? I don't think that that's really appropriate in this matchup. It's an indoor track. It's a fast track. We can see field goals from 50 plus yards in this game uh, where it's essentially get two first downs. You're in field goal range. That That's the new NFL with the new rules. So when I look at this matchup here, though, I actually think that Spencer Rattler was fine last week. I think he's going to have success moving the football, and I think he's extremely mobile. I think he's going to be able to run. He's going to be able to hit the tight end, Jawan Johnson, who he has some chemistry with. We already talked about Bub Means. And then, of course, Alvin Kamara. And, and they're just a disaster defensively. They have fallen off a cliff defensively. Uh, emotionally, I think they've checked out defensively as well. They've dropped four straight games. They don't have a buy in sight until week 12, and now it's a short week. I actually think we get points here. I don't think this game is as ugly as we think offensively. I went over the 36 and a half. 
I just double checked to make sure I wasn't playing RJ in our dynasty league because I traded him both Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. And because of Dak Prescott's bye week, he sent me back Bryce Young. I also got Devin Singletary. I mean, anyway, but because of Dak's, because Bryce Young stinks and because of Dak Prescott's bye week, I'm starting Spencer Rattler this week. And I was praying that I wasn't going up against uh, bake, the bake show and, and RJ there. Fortunately, I am spared a little bit. We get another London game on Sunday morning and my, oh my, is it a stinker? The Patriots versus the Jaguars in Wembley stadium. The Jags uh, somehow went, you know, that game shot over against the bears. Uh, despite what I thought was looked like a pretty good look at the under. Um, I like that last week. Now we get Jaguars minus five and a half. By the way, the two worst teams in the NFL tied with the Browns and the Panthers. I mean, Browns Panthers would be a worse matchup. I think to send London. This is close. Um, at least Trevor Lawrence and Drake may involved here. Jaguars are minus five and a half with a total of 42 and a half. RJ, um, are you back in this? Is, this is like Doug Peterson back as back against the wall as you can get. He's lucky. He got a second game in London. Otherwise he might not even be coaching this team this week. I am not backing Doug Peterson. I'm backing the other side because you mentioned how bad the Jaguars are. If they're that bad, then why are they laying five and a half points on a neutral field? I know people kind of tend to think that they have some type of home field advantage because they play over there so much. But, you know, the, every time you look at the fans in that game, they're all wearing different jerseys of all the 32 teams in the NFL. They're not there to watch the Jaguars. They're there to watch the NFL. Um, Jaguars defense, just as easy to move the ball on as Carolina for Chicago last week. 6.1 yards per play in each game. Gave up 24 points in the fourth quarter. The only win that Jacksonville had that shootout, that game turned into a shootout uh, with Indianapolis. Um, I, I, if you're laying five and a half with the Jaguars, you have not watched them over the first six weeks. The New Orleans offense looked like it leveled up with Drake May at quarterback in a tough matchup against Houston. Had some mistakes, but also had three passing touchdowns, more than Brissett has had in five starts combined. Um, so, you know, I would love taking the points here. The weather may be a factor. It's supposed to be kind of rainy. Um, Going to have some wind. It, it's it's somewhat covered. You know, the sides are covered. The top is open. We'll see how the wind affects it, um, the, the game there. But it's also supposed to be a new field they're breaking in there. That also may be a storyline. We'll see if people are slipping around like they did in Brazil. When you factor all these in, you want to be on the team taking the points, especially when the team laying a bunch of points is not very good. So love taking the Patriots here at plus five and a half. This is honestly the type of game we should send, like to have them play in London on July 4th, just like an off season exp like uh, expo, just to shove it in your face. Hey, Ray, remember that time, you know, independence day uh, here, here's Jaguars and Patriots. Enjoy folks uh, or Browns Panthers, whatever you want to send them. All right, let's take a break. When we come back a much better matchup featuring two surprising high scoring, big throwing quarterbacks and Geno Smith. The league leader in passing yards and Kirby Cousins lighting it up for Atlanta the last few games. Where to go in this matchup? We will tell you next on The Early Edge. Welcome back to the week seven NFL pick show or uh, early edge here on CBS sports network. We got Seahawks and Falcons big game in the NFC Falcons are minus three at home with a total of 51. And I'm going to go chalk donkey here and take the over. I think we see a ton of points in this game. Falcons averaging 33.3 points per game over their last three after averaging just 16.3 in their first two weeks. Geno Smith leading the league in passing yards at 296.3. Enough weapons there where even if AJ Terrell has a monster game and you know DK Metcalf has, has had bigger opportunities than the numbers have shown. I think we get points uh, from, the, from the Seahawks through the air. Falcons should be able to throw and certainly should be able to run against the Seahawks defense. It isn't slowing down anybody on the ground. I like Tyler Algier overs in this spot too, and, and B. John Robinson to find the end zone. RJ, do you have a lean in this game? My lean was to the Falcons, but it was at two and a half at three. It's probably stay away. I think three is the right number. Um, but if I was going to move it off of three, I'd move it the other way. So it's interesting that the market seems to be on Seattle at plus three. Um, that Island offense on fire, eight touchdowns in the last two weeks versus five in the first four weeks facing a Seattle defense. Now it's been beat up and bad for three weeks. I couldn't get there on the over. It's just so high a total. All you need is like one red zone turnover that that screws you up or a missed field goal here or there. Um, so, so, but I, I like it. I mean, Atlanta's D is nothing special. Can't rush the passer at all. So I can see a lot of points here. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if it's a shootout. Of course, 
You get those field goals, and then all of a sudden things go south. Titans and Bills. Bills minus nine. The Bills just acquired Amari Cooper. I uh, would presume if Devontae Adams is playing, that, that Amari Cooper was going to get out there for some snaps on Sunday. Total of 41 here, Mike. Uh, do you have a lean in this game? Yeah, it's going to be to the Bills' side. I think it was one of the best teaser legs on the board this week at eight and a half. And ultimately, I think that teaser liability is what forced the move to nine, nine and a half, more mm-hmm. so than action on the nine, nine and a half itself. Uh, so it's just something to consider there. It's usually teaser liability in this spot that moves that line. Uh, if it bounces back, I would not hesitate at all to put this in a teaser at eight and a half, bringing it down to two and a half. Uh, when you look at the Titans here, they've been fine defensively, but often. Defensively, I don't know how you could have any confidence, particularly in this particular spot uh, with a Will Levis-led offense. So I, I think that Tennessee has been very disappointing both to us and internally within that organization this season. Uh, but I don't see this as being a great spot to back them. So for me, it would be bills or nothing. And again, preferably in a uh, in a teaser if you find eight and a halfs again. Yeah, uh, you know, if I, if I had to go anything here. I think it's bills or nothing. And I agree with you. I think the teaser spot is fantastic, but obviously three is a little bit tricky. Could certainly see the Titans like keeping this within one score. And then Will Levis does something viral that makes him look stupid. And all of a sudden the bills are winning by 10. Uh, I I think there's at least got to be some interest here. Maybe in, you know, if I, if I was actually going to play something uh, under on Will Levis passing yards, if only because he might get benched. I mean, like how long is this team going to roll Will Levis out there? He has been terrible this season, probably cursed by Pete Prisco. The, uh, the curse of the Tuscan castle is what they're calling it uh, around, around the CBS offices, Bengals and Browns Bengals minus five and a half at Cleveland. I want to say that Joe Burrows never beating the Browns that that feels right, but it feels so, so wrong. RJ, a total of 41 and a half year Cleveland's offense, clearly just uh, a train wreck, even with Nick Chubb potentially coming back this week. Yeah, he's going to do it here because I don't know how Cleveland scores points. They haven't done it all season. Um, they've been under 20 points every single game. So I'm taking their team total under 19 and a half at MGM it's minus 140. I think you can shop around, get under 18 and a half, under 17 and a half. You should, you'll be fine because they just traded their best receiver. Passing game has been under 150 yards in five to six games. And, and in that one outlier it was 172. So it's not like he had a big explosion there. Um, we were trying to wait until to see uh, whether the offensive line got healthy with that boost the offense and they got both tackles back last week and it didn't make much of a difference. Um, I don't think you can count on Nick Chubb making a big difference in his first game back questionable question of how many touches he's going to get in that game. You don't overwork him too much since he's defense trending up after a great game against the giants on the road, mostly healthy. So it's hard for me to see this being Cleveland's best offensive game here. So fade them scoring 20 points by, uh, and not getting a bunch of touchdowns. They've only had seven offensive touchdowns in six games. I love the under 19 and a half for Cleveland's team total right here. I like that. I'm looking at the Bengals. I'm simply going to play them on the money line in a two team money line parlay. It's Bengals and Ravens. Uh, again, both road favorites, uh, not a situation I want to get into laying the number necessarily feel very good about both of them escaping with a win, putting those two together. It's plus 110, the price point. Uh, I think it should be minus 112, minus 114, a little bit of an edge there certainly should be over 50% that they both walk away with the victory. As far as the Bengals, I think that, you know, the very difficult, disappointing start to the season, but it's really not over just yet. They've got games in front of them that they can win and they can still salvage the season. I like that in this spot because I think their effort is extremely focused. The other side, not so much. So give me the Bengals here in a money line parlay. You know, you would think that things couldn't get worse for Browns fans. I mean, this is like the ultimate Nadir right now of, uh, and it's like, like the offense has been worse than it's been since they've been back in Cleveland. And but wait, there's more. Apparently, uh, Fox 8 News in Cleveland has, has learned that the Browns have decided to move the stadium from the lakefront and build a dome in Brook Park, according uh, to a report, which, man, couldn't get any worse for, for Browns fans. But yet here we are. You take take the dog pound out of Cleveland, man. I mean, that's that's a tough scene. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we have a banger on CBS. This Sunday, Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud going head-to-head in Packers and Texans. A lot of action to be had in this game. We'll tell you what the best bets are coming up next on The Early Edge.
Welcome back to the week seven early edge NFL pick show. Will Brinson, Mike McClure and RJ white looking at every game and giving you our best bets. As I mentioned, we got a absolute scorcher of a matchup between the Texans and the Packers on CBS on Sunday. The Packers are minus two and a half at Lambeau field with a total of 47 and a half CJ Stroud versus Jordan love. Just a great game here, Mike. What's uh, what's your look in this matchup? I like the Packers side. I think these two teams are very close and the spread indicates that at two and a half, I would still make Lambeau worth about two points in terms of home field. So essentially saying a half point. And I really think that it should be closer to two to two and a half considering the circumstances here. Uh, I personally make Nico Collins, one of the most valuable wide receivers in the NFL. He is extremely, extremely valuable to CJ Stroud in that offense. Uh, but green Bay is improving really on both sides of the ball. Top 10 in EPA per play offensively and defensively getting a little more healthy on the offensive side. And that's what I like here. There's no superstar receiver that has to get the attention. Uh, they're able to distribute the football really however the game dictates. And, and I just think they're an incredibly well-coached team. So considering the home field spot, uh, I'm still not sold on C.J. Stroud playing outdoors. Uh, I noticed he's played a lot better indoors in domes and controlled environments so far uh, in his career. So considering all of those circumstances, less than a field goal, I decided to lay it here with Green Bay because I think in this particular matchup the line should be four and a half four and a half is a big number i mean i think it's been bouncing between two and a half and three two and a half i'm kind of a stay away three i kind of like houston just because i think houston is a very good team and if i can catch a field goal with a very good team and they're not playing one of the elite elite teams the baltimore kansas city san francisco tier um i want to be in that situation so green bay's defense has been living off takeaways they're getting you know a three per game basically um i don't expect stroud to give them as much to work with and you talk about missing nico collins tang dell looked pretty good last week as they went and scored 41 points i know new england does not have a great defense defense right now but but um you know that that's a nice little substitute to put in there for your number one receiver so i think houston can hang around in this game if you can find three i would think about houston otherwise i'm staying away i'd probably lean towards the over here uh wind dependent it's gonna be unseasonably warm in in green bay uh this weekend like a high of 76 uh for 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 green bay this weekend which is which is really high but obviously you know, if that wind picks up it's looking like 13 12 13 range uh in the afternoon that's the one thing to be cautious of i think we could just see you know we, you, you talk about tank dell and then you have christian watson back romeo dobbs playing well Jaden reed i mean just explosive playmakers and the ability to put up points in a hurry in this game so i would lean towards the over probably wouldn't do that with dolphins and colts colts at home uh minus three here we don't know if I don't think we know for sure if Anthony Richardson is going to play. We know Tua Tagovailoa will not. It's looking like Richardson probably going to start back over Joe Flacco, uh, despite Flacco playing well, RJ. A total here of 43 and a half. Which way are you looking? I like the Colts here. The market has been against that. They've, they've bet this down to three because they were on the Dolphins early. Now, I think that that's because they expect Tyler Huntley to step up after two weeks to prepare for this game, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable in Mike McDaniel's offense. Remember when he was first announced as starter, um, the market loved that. They, that line moved, I believe, more than three points when they were facing the Titans. Then they got blown out in that game um, in prime time. So um, I don't know that we, I think it might be a case where we're just overrating Huntley um, in general, you know, a guy that, that has been more potential than than production at this point. Um, and Miami's defense, not great at getting interceptions. So the boomer bust nature of Anthony Richardson might not hit that bust factor too much if uh, Miami is not great at generating turnovers here. So I think you want to be on the cold side here at minus three, mostly healthy. We'll see if Jonathan Taylor comes back. If Jonathan Taylor's playing in this game and Anthony Richardson, I think this line needs to be north of three. Yeah. When I look at this one here, I, I really want to lean towards the Dolphins team total under. Uh, when I see this here at 20 and a half, I would pay an alt line at 21 and a half as well. It just seems like a big ask. I know that the bye week couldn't have come at a better time for them and they've got time to prepare for it. But I still think the way you beat the Colts is still running the football on the ground, which is certainly going to keep that clock moving. If Jonathan Taylor's in, it definitely helps keep that clock moving with the Colts game plan. So for me, it's a big ask. If I had to play something here, it would be the Dolphins team total total under 20 and a half or paying up to minus 140 on 21 and a half. Dolphins, by the way, averaging 12 points per game this year, 17.2 points per game less than they did in 2023. If that holds, it would be the second biggest drop off from one season to the next since the 1925 Cleveland Bulldogs 
which I'm sure we all remember the, uh, the, the hal- halcyon days of the Cleveland Bulldogs lions at the Vikings, man. This is a great game too. Vikings are minus one and a half in Minnesota over under of 50 and a half. Lots of great fantasy options, tons of DFS looks. I would assume here, uh, Mike and, you know, kind of surprising. I know, I know the Vikings are great. And they're undefeated, but man, the Lions look like a truck stick, although they will be missing Aiden Hutchinson here. Surprised to see them as a dog. Yeah, surprised to see them as a dog. I think people are finally catching up to where Minnesota has been. I I do think the teams are relatively equal, but I I do trust the Lions side here. So I I think the thing that stands out immediately when you've seen this game at one and a half or two or two and a half is a teaser leg instantly. Uh, I think this game is going to be extremely competitive. I don't see the Lions losing by multiple scores here. so a good scenario for Minnesota is just simply winning this game. It, they're not winning by eight plus points. Uh, so give me the Lions plus seven and a half. I decided to pair it with Kansas City plus seven and a half as well. Uh, just Andy Reid coming off a bye. We'll talk about that game a little bit later. But for me, the best look in this one is going to be a teaser leg with the Lions. Yeah, this one was at two and a half, and I was treating it like the Houston game. I wanted it to get to three so I could take the Lions, and, and the market snuffed that out pretty quickly and moved down to one and a half. Um, I, you know, I think they can overcome that Hutchinson injury. It seems it seems like Minnesota would have a better chance of keeping up if it's a shootout with Hutchinson out. Goff just needs to avoid bad decisions versus a, t- a defense that's really good at generating interceptions. Um, Minnesota's been living with that pass rush, but Detroit is one of the best offensive lines to counter that in the league. So I think it can be a close game that Detroit wins. Um, you know, I think we're not going to really know the tenor of the game until we get in and it might be a better one to wait and live bet. So if I had to play it now, I'm still a lean on the Lions, but I'm going to be looking to see how this game starts off. Yeah, I'm going to take the Lions here. Uh, Jared Goff sacked zero times on 54 dropbacks versus the Vikings Blitz in 2023, according to CBS Research. Uh, Goff and Darnold, both first and second in yards per pass attempt against the Blitz this season. (laughs) 2024 man who didn't see that coming uh by the way the vikings have trailed for just three minutes and 26 seconds this season fifth fewest since the merger all uh the four teams in front of them in fact the one team behind them in terms of that statistic all made the super bowl in those respective seasons 84 dolphins 98 broncos 99 rams 09 saints and the 2023 49ers I will still take the Lions here. I just think they have the best roster and golf is playing some great football the last two weeks. Eagles minus three at the Giants. It's a Saquon Barkley revenge game special. Um, MetLife Stadium has not been kind to the the Giants and the Jets since they since they built that place, uh, you know, for whatever it's worth. But Barkley, man, that's the story here to me. You Do you see these running backs, especially high-profile ones, going up against their old team? Saquon's being asked all week if he thinks he'll be booed. His usage through the roof. I, we've seen more Jalen Hurts rushes near the goal line, and you have A.J. Brown and, and Devonta Smith back to sort of take away some of that. But um, w- with Dexter Lawrence in the fold, I, I expect Barkley to be used in the passing game here and to put up, you know, 150 total plus yards. I think the Eagles probably win. I think the Eagles definitely win the game. And I think they do cover the minus three. I like them here, uh, Mike, as a, as sort of a lean. Yeah, I think I would lean in the direction of the Eagles as well. Uh, You know, I understand the line movement a little bit. They have not looked good. They kind of played with their food in that last game a bit where you expected them to be a little sharper coming out of the bye and getting healthy. Uh, For this spot, though, it really just depends on Malik Neighbors. I think the line clearly indicates he's playing. Uh, And if he does play, I think he makes his team a lot better. And where I think it makes it a lot better is I think it does allow Daniel Jones to take off and run a little bit more because of all that attention downfield on Neighbors. So I lean to the Eagles most likely thing I would be betting here is a Saquon Barkley anytime touchdown at anything better than minus 150 Uh, I think that's going to be a conscious effort on on not only his part but just the Eagles part in general they are a team that seems to be maybe a little petty in that sense in this particular uh, matchup in the division so I, I like this spot for the Eagles but most specifically Saquon we talk about Daniel Jones taking off and running. He might have to do that a lot because Andrew Thomas is out of this game. And that, that really lowers the the ceiling of this Giants offensive line. I mean, the fit, Eagles could make it like that Saints game where they were just, you know, uh, feasting on an on, on undermanned Saints offensive line and doing whatever they wanted to do there. Um, so I think, you know, the Giants 
I have two kind of counterintuitive plays that that I like in this game. I like the Eagles minus three and I like the under. So I didn't want to give either one. Um, so both are going to be my leans here. I think it's weird that the market's backing the Giants down to plus three when you have that Thomas injury. You also have Kayvon Thibodeau out. You also have Brian Burns not practicing. You also have Dex Dexter Lawrence not practicing. So, I mean, the, the Eagles could roll out here and score 30 and win a game 30 to 13. It wouldn't shock me that much. Um, I'm not as worried about the Jordan Mailata injury. Fred Johnson has played well when he's been in there and uh, they're going to run the, the ball a ton anyway that should be the focus with Saquon so like the, the Eagles to cover here at minus three I think that's a good number I also think it could stay under just because I don't know what we're going to get from that Giants offense even if Malik Neighbors is back all right let's take a break we talk about revenge when we come back we have the ultimate revenge game Super Bowl revenge the Chiefs took down the Niners in overtime on CBS uh, last year in Vegas they're looking for a three-peat, and they are a rare. Patrick Mahomes, a rare underdog here. You don't see Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes coming off a bye as underdogs, but that is the case when they head to San Francisco. We'll tell you the best bets for that game and much more coming up next on The Early Edge. Welcome back to the Early Edge NFL Week 7 Pick Show. Will Brinson, Mike McClure, and RJ White giving out our best bets for every single game on the slate. Raiders at the Rams. Rams are minus six and a half of the total of 43 and a half. Obviously, things got even worse for the Raiders in a bad season. They had to trade away Devontae Adams. They now have Brock Bowers and a banged up Jacoby Myers. So good luck with that. We should see plenty of usage there against a bad Rams defense, but I'm going to take a teaser here. The Rams are minus six and a half. That's a, it's a hefty number. Uh, Cooper cup tracking like he's going to be back for this game. We hope, um, but I'm a little nervous about laying the six and a half. So I'm going to toss the Rams in a teaser. Uh, I'm using that KC leg. Mike mentioned it earlier. You know, we're talking about the chiefs as a seven and a half point favorites in a teaser situation with, with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes off a of bye. I don't care who they're playing. I feel pretty confident about that. And I do feel confident that the Rams win this game. You know, Kyron Williams should have a field day against this Raiders defense. I, I think Matthew Stafford plays a good game as well. Rams sort of, you know, backs against the wall, need to win this one. I will take the uh, the Rams in a teaser. Any uh, lean for you here, Mike? I would lean that way. I think it's, you know, my computer number is dead on six and a half. And I thought I was being a little ambitious, honestly. Uh, you know, when you look at the Rams, though, they were a team that were just absolutely desperate to get to their bye week. It could not have come at a better time for them. Uh, and they do get this on their home field. Now, their home field is not a significant home field advantage, one of the worst in the NFL. Uh, but I do think that they'll come out and have some success. I really question the Raiders what that locker room is like right now. If they've lost it, if they haven't yet, they will soon for sure. Uh, so the only way I could look would be to the Rams. I'm fine with it in a teaser uh, at six and a half, but mostly going to be off of this game. Potentially a uh, a Rams team total over is another way to look. Yeah, it's hard to lay this many points with a one and four Rams team, but Vegas might be the worst team in the league at this point. Uh, the Rams defense has been torn apart, but look at the teams they faced. They faced Detroit, Arizona, San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, Green Bay. It's not exactly easy matchups anywhere, especially with Chicago playing a lot better after the first few weeks. The Vegas offense hit one big play early versus Denver, then went into a shell after a four, the first quarter interception by Aiden O'Connell. I think the Rams defense can finally get ahead in the matchup here and have a good game. Uh, the Rams offense has been moving the ball well, even without their top receivers. So uh, I think they'll have a successful game. I think they should be able to run on the Vegas defense with Wilkins out. So it, now that it's down to six and a half, I don't mind laying it with the Rams. If you want to play it safe with a teaser, I think that's fine too. But the lean in this game, I don't, I don't see how you could take the Raiders in any spot right now. So if you're going to lean to it, to take the Rams. Yep, agree. Panthers at Commanders, uh, I mean, a stunning total here. If you, I, I would have to assume that this total wasn't at the, you know, 51 and a half before the season. We got Commanders minus eight. I don't know what to say, man. The Panthers are, may, I don't know, may, if the Raiders are worse, maybe, but the Panthers are a really bad football team, particularly RJ on defense. But eight is a lot to lay with the Commanders. 
Yeah, I know it's really tough. Um, you know, you kind of look at that sticker shock with Washington and still consider that defense could let them down at any time and make make eight a tough number to cover. That's why I like teasing it down to two. Um, I'm still adjusting to Washington being good, so it's hard for me to lay that touchdown. Um, uh, Carolina's defense just can't stop anyone, though. 34-plus points allowed in three straight. It makes the Washington team total over tempting even at 30-and-a-half, which is wild. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think if you're going to play this, you want to tease it down. The initial excitement over Dalton and Carolina's offense is kind of worn off, but I'm not ruling out the garbage time points here so that's why i'm teasing it i am on the over here and i i think i'm a little worried that andy dalton lets me down as you mentioned the commander's defense could certainly you know cough up points here and i, I think chuba, chuba hubbard will have a nice day on the ground deontay johnson should be fine through the air um I, I kind of want to take the commander's team total over 30 and a half. It's just so high. 30 and a half is absurd for a team total. Uh, even, you know, even for a team like the commanders that's been playing this well. Um, but, but I think, I, I think I'd lean a little bit more towards the commander's team total over 30 and a half than the full game over, just because I don't entirely trust the Panthers. I do trust the Panthers defense to not do anything against Washington. And I fully expect uh, Jaden Daniels to have a field day. Think he could easily go over his passing yards and rushing yards total. Any lean for you on this game, Mike? It would be the commander side and likely in a teaser. You know, I have to wonder, this might be the biggest week of the year for teasers. When you look across the board, sportsbook handle might be extremely high on teasers. This one's a lot like the Bills and Titans, frankly. It wouldn't shock me if this number pushed to nine just to simply ease some of that teaser liability that is likely out there and likely coming. Uh, so if you do like the commanders at eight, I, I think it's a tough, tough number to lay. I would lay it now just because I do think that it's only going one way by game time, just because of all all that teaser liability. So uh, for me, it would be commanders minus uh, two and, and find a dance partner for a teaser it is really the only thing I could look for here. All right. We mentioned the chiefs and the 49ers, just an incredible game. Um, you know, even with the injuries, Rasheed Rice, uh, of course, out and Isaiah Pacheco, Kareem Hunt somehow magically discovering it immediately after I dropped him in dynasty, of course, Sigh. Uh, I mentioned that I have uh, Kansas City in a teaser leg, and you do as well, RJ, as does Mike. Teaser City. Welcome to Teaser City. Population us. Yeah, it's got to be a must tease game. You know, Chiefs catching points off of a bye. You know, I don't mind taking that anyway. I don't care that they're playing San Francisco on the road. But when it's you can get plus one and a half, you got to tease it up to seven and a half. Um, I know they have some injuries on offense, um, but it's hard to see why they should be laying points against anyone right now because they they overcame those injuries in that last game and it looked fine just with Travis Kelsey and Juju Smith Schuster and, and going to those guys on offense. San Francisco also dealing with injuries, especially up the middle of the defense. Third string safety potentially starting in this game. Patrick Mahomes, you know he's going to go out there and exploit that. So even though it's a huge revenge spot for San Francisco after the Super Bowl, Kansas City just has had a Shanahan's number there with Andy Reid there. I like playing them, um, but it's an easy teaser call. Yeah, it's definitely the teaser leg on Kansas City. It's Andy Reid off of the bye. Uh, look, I, I think there's a lot we could talk about forever on that, but it's really just the number. It, it's seven and a half on Kansas City. When else are you getting that? Uh, really this season. So I'm going to pair it with the Detroit Lions, also seven and a half currently. Uh, I think it's an excellent teaser this week. Both of those games, very important to all of the teams playing overall, really. But I, I really like Kansas City as a teaser leg here. And I will also say I do like Travis Kelsey overs. The number sitting at 60 and a half receiving yards right now. The number should be closer to 70 in the current conditions. Uh, he's going to see 10 targets minimum in this game. So Give me Travis Kelsey overs now because they're not going to be the same number on Sunday. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, get it on Kelsey while you can. As I mentioned, I got the KC plus seven and a half. Look, I mean, the Chiefs under Patrick with Patrick Mahomes as an underdog, he is 10 and three straight up, 11, one and one against the spread. They averaged 32 and a half points per game and 301.7 pass yards per game. Uh, first in all of those, once you hit the minimum you know, starting requirements. And, and I just think, you know, as much as like, like the, the KC, these teams know when they're underdogs and they're underdogs to a team that they beat in the Super Bowl. And Patrick Mahomes is going to come out looking sharp. And I, I agree. With you. I think it's a big time Travis Kelsey game as well. Jets at the Steelers Sunday night football, the newly acquired Devontae Adams. What's the 
Like pick your meme, whether it's Triple H, you know, whipping the blanket off and he's like the cast is fake or, you know, soccer player limping along and, and all of a sudden he pops up and he's healthy. Devontae Adams pra practicing fully, no issues with his hamstring magically after he took that red eye from Las Vegas to New York to join the Jets. This, I mean, it's just incredible. Guys, just, he couldn't be healthier. Uh, he's just giggling about it. The Jets are two-point favorites at the Steelers with a total of 38 here. Uh, Mike, thoughts on this game or any best bets? Yeah, I mean, I lean the Jets way. I know they lost another game. Uh, it really in kind of improbable fashion, but I, I think they're definitely the side here. I know that Pittsburgh's had a good defense. Uh, I'm very worried about this quarterback change potentially for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but bringing Devontae in, just another weapon uh, that, that's really going to help Aaron Rodgers. I think we see another nice drive out of the locker room, just like we saw in that last game. So I'm going to be looking to back the Jets here early. I'm going to take them in the first quarter, minus half a point, minus one and a half points. You can find this at plus 144. Uh, I think it's a very nice payout. I do not think that they should be getting plus money to win the first quarter because I certainly expect them to have some success on that opening drive. Yeah, this line was uh, Pittsburgh minus one on the look ahead. So this is a major move off the Adams um, move. It's not like the Jets looked great in that that loss to the Bills. So I don't think you're moving them for that. I'd typically be looking to fade that move, but I don't trust the Pittsburgh offense with Russell Wilson at quarterback and a third string center. Um, I don't know how many points they're going to score against, which should be a motivated Jets defense now that they see that they're going forward for a Super Bowl with, by trading for Adams. So um, I think you get a motivated Rodgers here. He has not looked 100%, so he needs to start playing better. Um, and that maybe that'll come with better health, but I think if you're going to play this game, I would only be looking toward the Jets side. Yeah, I think you could also peek at Devontae Adams anytime touchdown. And and worth noting, like Russell Wilson is, you know, backup center. You're going to have blanket coverage on George Pickens. They they want Russ to do this bootleg play action deep shot stuff. Good luck against this Jets secondary, man. I like I I get Justin Fields admitted he hadn't played as great as well as he could have, but but still, I you know we'll see how well Russ plays in this game. I'm not entirely optimistic. I am optimistic for a scorcher on Monday night when Lamar Jackson, who's just having an incredible season, Derrick Henry played great too, and Baker Mayfield. Lead the league in touchdown passes. The Bank Show gets paid. Derrick Henry on pace for another 2,000 yards. Excellent game between the Ravens and the Bucks. We'll tell you what to take coming up next on The Early Edge. Welcome back to the Early Edge NFL Week 7 Pick Show. Will Brinson, Mike McClure, and RJ White giving you best bets for every game of the slate. And we have a scorcher in the first Monday night game between the Ravens and the Buccaneers. Ravens, hefty road favorites here. Minus three and a half at Tampa with a total of 49 and a half. I mean, Baker Mayfield playing out of his mind, but Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, a force to be reckoned with in this spot, Mike. Yeah, the force to be reckoned with for sure. I, I think the Ravens are the best team in the NFL. I've got them rated number one just ahead of Kansas City and San Francisco. Uh, and I have a pretty healthy rating on Tampa Bay, too. It's just the Ravens are the best team. The home field's not particularly scary here at Tampa. So when I look at this matchup, I think three and a half is a fine number. Uh, I make it just over four. Uh, but I really want to play them on the money line. I feel great about them, even in a close game. Just their ability to put a game away with Lamar and Derek. Derrick Henry in that rushing game. That's where I think the difference stands out. So I don't mind laying the three and a half with them, but I really like pairing them in a money line parlay with the Cincinnati Bengals. The price point on that is plus 110. Uh, and I definitely think there's a greater than 50% chance both of those AFC North teams win. Yeah, you never want to step in front of the Ravens. It's tough doing that, but they're on the road. They're playing a team that has played really, really well. Um, so three and a half seems like a little bit too much of a number for me. If I was going to play it, I'd probably lean to the Bucks. Their only loss in regulation this year was in that massive injury game against Denver. The run D has stepped up the last few weeks with a healthier unit, and we know that's what the Ravens want to do is run the ball. Uh, they've had uh, some pretty easy matchups running the ball the last few weeks. Um, their defense is vulnerable to good pass offenses, and Heaven Bay certainly has one. We'll see if Mike Evans is able 
able to play in this game. And they also found a pretty good run game last week. Could have a three-headed run, uh, monster at running back there. So it feels dumb to step in front of Baltimore. And like I said, they've played some close games against good teams on the road, even with games that weren't that close, uh, turned into close games like that Dallas game. So if Tampa is a good team, I don't see why they can't go in there and, and, and be competitive and maybe lose this game by three or have a chance to win it. So I would lean to the Bucs here. Who didn't have Sean Tucker winning NFC Offensive Player of the Week in week six on their bingo card ahead of the season. I mean, that's, I think everybody saw that coming, right? Um, you know, the, Liam Cohen's done a great job with this offense and with Baker Mayfield in his first year in Tampa Bay. And I think the way that they can, they can, they're willing to be variable and multiple in the way that they attack you and to throw the ball, you know, reliably. And I expect them to do it against Baltimore. I, I lean towards the over in this one. I know, I mean, I'm again, chalk donkey overs galore, big numbers, whatever. I just think you're going to see Baltimore able to attack the, 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 both teams are kind of pass funnels, right? And I think you're going to see both teams lean into that approach. Now, if Baltimore gets a big lead, we'll see a healthy dose of Derrick Henry, but it's also possible that it turns into sort of a shootout. We see more Justice Hill, Lamar throwing down the field. Zay Flowers has been soaking up targets lately. And I, I think we just get a ton of points on Monday night in this game. Maybe not so much with our other Monday night game featuring the Chargers minus two and a half at the Cardinals of the total of 43 and a half Jim Harbaugh two and oh against Arith arrhythmias like shout out to Jim Harbaugh just out here stomping out uh, in game in game heart issues like like it's his job. He's also stomping out opponents pretty early and often with the rushing attack, which, you know, against Arizona, you feel like he could probably move the football here, RJ. Yeah, Arizona has been behind double digits at halftime in their last four games. Their offense may not have Marvin Harrison. Seems like he is progressing through the protocol. This game being on Monday, there's a potential that he is out there. Um, but the Chargers have also led at halftime in four straight. Offense had no issue on the road against the excellent Denver defense, despite the in-game injuries they suffered at receiver and even a few on the offensive line. Rashawn Slater was in and out of the game, I believe. Trey Pipkins got hurt. Um, I think the Chargers offense should blow past 20 points against this defense here. No team has scored more than 20 on them all year on the defensive side. So I, I like the Chargers minus a half point um, in the first half. Could get that at minus 105 over at MGM just based on how these teams have trended in the first half. Now that you can also find two and a half in the market, I also like laying it two and a half with the Chargers. So I'm going to be on the board for two best bets in this game. Yeah, I'm looking at the Chargers team total. It's a 22 and a half. It's a big number, but I like their shot at 23 here. They've got an awesome defense that's going to put them in position uh, to really succeed. And I know they're not a deep threat team, but let's not pretend that Justin Herbert's not in a capable quarterback. Uh, I think he is capable, and I think he will be in this matchup. So I like the Chargers uh, to score 23 or more in this game. Yeah, and I mean, look, J.K. Dobbins come on, yeah, has been fantastic this year. Kamani Vidal came in last week and looked excellent. Got a lot of praise from Jim Harbaugh. They can. This is a play action special for Justin Herbert and those deep shots, particularly to Quentin Johnson. Let Lad McConkey eat up underneath. Hard not to like the Chargers in this spot. Just, I mean. I think the Cardinals are up and coming, but Jim Harbaugh is just an, a great coach and he's getting the most out of the Chargers early on. RJ, very quickly, look ahead for week eight. Bengals, Eagles, what you like? Yeah, like Bengals minus two and a half. This could blow up if the Eagles just have a great game against the Giants and it could come right back down. The market just seems like they're even on these teams, treating them basically the same uh, in their matchups at the Giants these past two weeks, but adjusting for the neighbors' um, availability. I think it's a better chance that Philly's issues are exposed at the Giants than since he's are at Cleveland, which looks like a complete dead team. So I think there's a better chance this gets to three than down to two. And even if it does get to two, I mean, the difference between two and two and a half isn't that, that great. So I'd rather get the two and a half now instead of making it three. Mm. Spicy. Bengals, uh, Bengals offense certainly rounding into form. All right, that'll do it for us. Great stuff as always, guys. Excellent picks. Uh, best bets locked in across the board. We'll be back next week in this spot to give out our best bets for the entire slate. And you can get all your best bets at Sportsline. Go to sportsline.com slash join and use promo code WINNERS, W-I-N-N-E-R-S, to get 60% off an annual plan. And if you like winners, you're going to find them plenty on the early edge, our daily sports line betting podcast. You can get it wherever you subscribe to podcast 10 a.m. See you Najad and all the guys take you through it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. For RJ, for Mike, I'm Brinson. We'll see you guys later.